Um, hi, my name's Alex. Uh, I'm going to talk about NPM on IPFS. So a little about me. I am a JavaScript developer. Uh, I work at Protocol Labs. I work on uh, the JavaScript implementation of IPFS. Um, and I also have uh, a foot in the uh, Package Manager's special interest group, um, where we're trying to make IPFS a great platform to, to run your package manager on top of. Uh, I'm aching brain uh, on most internets. And yeah, IPM on, uh, NPM on IPFS. This is super cool. Uh, I'm not going to talk about NPM, because I'm assuming everyone knows what this is. I hope I don't need to talk about IPFS uh, very much, but you, you know what it is. If you don't, yeah, ask the person next to you. Um, so we built a thing. Uh, we built a registry uh, that, is, that is basically a mirror of NPM. Uh, and it adds CIDs for every single tarball on there. Uh, and you can use it today by specifying the registry argument uh, and HTTPS, blah, 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 registry.js.ipfs.io. Uh, you can use it with Yarn, obviously, because uh, at this point you're just telling, the, uh, you know, telling your client to use the registry as config, um, which is like, not terribly interesting, because it is over HTTP, it is still centralized. Uh, kind of behind the scenes, you have, you know, your laptop. You connect to an Nginx uh, router, to HTTP. It will send real requests to um, the registry mirrors, which will then actually pull the dependencies from other IPFS nodes on the network. So behind this this gateway, it is IPFS uh, all the way down, um, which again is like it's it's kind of like it's cool from here, but like here it's kind of boring. Like, we know this. Like it's kind of we've done this. It's not. It's not anything amazing. Um, so like, if you want to not use HTTP for that initial first leg, well, you can use uh, the IPFS NPM client. IPFS NPM, so what this will do is it will spin up a local HTTP server that behaves a lot like the public NPM registry. And then it will configure your local NPM client to hit that HTTP server. It will then do a translation from the URL that it's received. Um, work out what the CID is of the tarball that you've requested, and then fetch that from NPM. So you're still using HTTP. We can't get around that, more on that later, um, in the client itself. But once, like, no HTTP traffic will actually leave your laptop at that point. Um, so yeah, you can use it with NPM, or you can use it with Yarn, because we're all friends. Uh, so a quick demo. OK, cool. So I am in a directory. There is nothing in it. Um, I'm going to remove my npm cache. Do, do, do. OK, cool. So I can create a new project. IPFS npm init. So um, it's nice to notice that we haven't rewritten npm at all. This literally wraps the existing client. Um, hello. It still kind of works. So I'm just creating a default uh, default project. All right, now I have a package JSON. There's nothing much in it. Um, so if I install npm, save number. So I'm going to install this uh, dependency and save it to my package JSON. The internet is doing what it does when you, I think it's just here. I think in the crowd, the internet works fine. And then here, it doesn't work very well at all. Um, so, so I'm actually offline at the moment, as you've just seen. I haven't actually been able to connect to anything, uh, which is, you know, tedious. Um, so what has just happened? So it's, tri so it's started an IPFS node. Uh, yeah, cool. So what happened? Um, so there's a lot to unpack here. So. We started from an empty project directly, directory. We started an IPFS node. Um, it starts listening on a local, a local port. Um, it can, well, it can't connect to the network because I'm offline. So it also works offline, which is like amazing. That was, that was going to be a demo later on, but <laughs> flaky internet stealing my thunder. Anyway, so so we have uh, we've connected to a local IPFS node. So we have this, the registry, so the, the, our copy of the registry holds every single NPM package. So there are over 900,000 modules on IPF, uh, sorry, on NPM. 
<clears throat> so these are stored in an enormous hamp shard. Um, so Matthias talked about hamp sharding in DAT uh, in his talk yesterday. Uh, so this is stored in, in the IPFS implementation of, of, of the same algorithm. Um, it just means that we can store enormous data structures and you don't need to load the whole thing because that would be super tedious. So what it does is it loads the very root node of that shard and that gives it a starting point to then work out the directory path through this enormous structure um, so you can get to any node with a few hops without having to load like this enormous flat directory of almost a million files, uh, folders in it. Um, yeah, so it tries to connect to download that, fails miserably because I'm offline, uh, but it has, because uh, you, know, you have your local repo, enough of it is cached uh, in the local repo that I can still do it offline, uh, which is great. Um, yeah, so connects to the local proxy and then it, so the npm client issues a get for big number. So the first thing it does is it requests the document. So a document, in case you haven't seen it, looks a bit like this. It's a whole bunch of JSON um, that describes the package. So you've got the name, all the versions, uh, like keywords, the dependencies of each version. Uh, and then we have this dist structure that tells you uh, the tarball that the given version resolves to, and it gives you a SHA sum of that tarball. And then we, the thing that we've added is this field here. So you just have CIDs for all the tarballs. So when uh, your client requests the document, it will look it up in its local uh, repo. If it's not there, then it will go to the public, uh, it will go to the, the IPFS registry. Um, get the document, work out what the CID is, and then fetch it. And so that's what it's doing here. So it's resolved um, this, uh, um, this version, so this CID. So it, it returns the list of all the possible versions. The client decides which version it wants. Um, so it's requested 1.1.0, and then we look that version up in the document and say, that's the CID. Start fetching from the network, stream it back to the client. It unpacks it into a modules folder, and everyone's happy. That's it. It's amazing, right? I mean, that's it. That's the demo. Just <laughs> one second. But anyway, so, so what's just happened? So we've got the developer machine. We've got uh, our copy of IPFS that's running. And then we've got the, the network. And so no, no HTTP traffic leaves your machine. Everything is IPFS all the way down, which is super cool. And so when you're doing this, you are part of this network. And the more people who do it, uh, you know, the better the availability can become. So if you're, if you're in an office with a whole bunch of people who are running the same thing, you're on an airplane or something like that, suddenly you can start pulling these packages from people that you don't know and maybe the packages that you don't have. And hooray, like, this is amazing. Grass with friends. So what's next? Like, it's cool. You can use it. You can install it today, npm dash, sorry, IPFS dash npm. It'll install the IPFS dash npm client, also IPFS dash yarn. Uh, so you can use that too. It's cool. But what is next? So like distributed publishing. So this is, this is something that's a lot more interesting to a, a group like this. Um, so I have this pull request open uh, on Pakote. I'm probably saying it wrong. I'm really sorry. Uh, that's what I think it says. Um, and what this pull request does is it adds support for IPNS uh, URLs to NPM. Um, so Everyone knows, like, the other day, GitHub produced their own, like, they released their own registry, which is, like, cool. It's, it's another centralized registry, um, this kind of federated set of walled gardens that, that were, you know, if that's the future, it's not, I don't know, it's not distributed. That's not, that's not good enough. Um, but if you could publish your own modules without any kind of central registry, then that would be amazing. And so, like, this PR hopefully um, will help us get somewhere like towards that goal. Um, so you can publish your own document with an IPNS name, which just briefly, like if you're not familiar with IPNS, it is this idea that like, so you have content addressing, which is cool because you know, you always, uh, for the same address, you're guaranteed to get the same content. But if the publisher of that content wants you to get an updated version of that, then you've only got the identifier for the old content, so you can't get it, uh, which is kind of boring. Um, so there's this idea of called IPNS, which is a hash that you resolve to a CID, which you resolve to some content. So if you were to publish the document, you could update the IPNS name that publishes, that, that resolves then to the new document. 
uh, and then people can get the updated versions of things, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, so you can basically do this kind of thing in your package.json. Which would be lovely. And then you see you've got the version numbers and you can get everything that you want completely distributed with no centralized registry. That is it. That is actually it. Thank you very much.